No chemical does more on an international basis to promote disease than does glyphosate, so I want to give it some recognition for its ability to block cytochrome P450, its genotoxic and DNA damaging effects, the fact that it also causes mitochondrial dysfunction and therefore is connected to a wide range of diseases, which I'll review in just a moment. It also achieves excellent tissue penetration due to the surfactants and solvents that are added to the overall formula. It's carcinogenic and now known to be estrogenic via its ability to activate estrogen receptors. It's also synergistic with genetically modified food promoted inflammation. I'll show you that in just a moment. It also has unsurpassed political protection and achieves widespread exposure uh, to the population via air, food, and water. In the United States, for example, uh, more than 75% of air and water samples in Mississippi are contaminated with glyphosate. That's really hard to beat, you know. Um, for example, if you look at crack cocaine and heroin and tobacco smoking, none of those achieve uh, a 75% market penetration. So glyphosate really stands out. And I'll briefly review some of that information with you here. And then, as I mentioned, I'll develop that in a separate presentation later. So let's just briefly overview some of the information I just provided, but I want to show you the citations and a few more details. Glyphosate blocks the cytochrome P450 detoxification pathway, and so in that manner we would expect it to promote the accumulation of various toxins and increase the incidence and severity of adverse drug effects. And of course it leads to the accumulation of, its, of itself, its self-same toxin. When the cytochrome P450 pathway is blocked, uh, not only do other uh, pollutants and chemicals begin to accumulate, but so does glyphosate because it's basically blocking its own detoxification. I think that's very important and I certainly don't stand alone on that position. Uh, glyphosate's suppression of cytochrome P450 certainly connects it with many modern diseases. It's also genotoxic and causes inflammatory and apoptotic cell death, as you can see here, reviewed in Scientific American in 2009. Uh, here's another article showing cytotoxic and DNA damaging properties of glyphosate and Roundup in human-derived buccal epithelial cells. This was achieved very rapidly at a 450-fold dilution, showing that this glyphosate-Roundup combination is very, very potent for effecting damage in human cells. It also promotes mitochondrial uh, dysfunction, which we all know now is associated with migraine headaches, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and of course fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. But I think we need to give some attention to the fact that these conditions could be exacerbated by glyphosate. And here is a quick overview of some of that data. You can see all of these at the National Library of Medicine database called PubMed. In this article, what was shown is that mixtures of glyphosate and the surfactant TN20 aggravate mitochondrial damage and induce apoptosis and necrosis. This article showed that glyphosate-induced mitochondrial membrane potential could be a cause of apoptosis in human cells. Also, this article showed uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation, which basically means that you know, the final step of energy production, the most effective and efficient step of energy production, which is the electron transport chain, was disrupted by Roundup. And this was actually published in 2005, so this data has been around for quite a while. Again, because of the solvents and surfactants, glyphosate achieves excellent tissue penetration, so it's able to get into cells and do its dirty work. I'll let you take a look at that. Most recently, in 2014, this very provocative and exciting article was published showing that glyphosate induces human breast cancer cell growth via estrogen receptors. So that makes it not only a carcinogen, uh, but also an estrogenic compound, which we would then expect to promote uh, other conditions, other types of cancer, but also autoimmune diseases, which are known to have an estrogen component. Uh, all of these things, uh, as I already mentioned, contribute to inflammation, and genetically modified foods have been shown to exacerbate inflammation, according to this animal study, for example, where half the animals received normal corn and the other half received Monsanto's genetically modified corn. What, what was shown here is that the Monsanto genetically modified corn actually caused more inflammation, evidenced by an increase in interleukin-6. But what I think is very important here is that what was shown was a doubling of the gamma-delta T-cell population. And we know that in humans, gamma-delta T-cells are associated with asthma, food allergy, chronic arthritis, and autoimmunity. 
So that evidence is uh, very clear and independently published. So uh, let's take a look at one of the tables from this article. You can see here the gamma delta T cell population was uh, approximately doubled uh, by the consumption of genetically modified corn. And we know that those gamma delta T cells, quote, definitely play important roles in the development of autoimmune diseases. So I invite you to consider that. Uh, I also mentioned that uh, glyphosate has unreasonable and unsurpassed political protection. And that's because many people who work in government have also worked for the company that makes this chemical. I invite you to take a look at this article by Paul Craig Roberts. He's a PhD in economics, former assistant secretary of the treasury under President Ronald Reagan and former associate editor of the Wall Street Journal. He published this excellent article uh, available freely online called One Nation Under Monsanto. I invite you to take a look at his data and his conclusions there. Uh, we also see that glyphosate and the whole cadre, we might say, or the whole category of genetically modified foods uh, achieve some degree of political protection, interestingly enough, from the American Medical Association, who has voted against the labeling of genetically modified foods, so kind of keeping the American people in the dark. Uh, and this really shouldn't come as any major surprise because the American Medical Association did this previously on the topic of uh, tobacco and cigarette smoking. For many, many years, the American Medical Association actually promoted uh, tobacco use. And then when tobacco was found to be a carcinogen, they delayed the deployment of that information to the public uh, for about 25 years. Uh, and according to a book uh, published called Serpent on the Staff, the Unhealthy Politics of the American Medical Association, uh, this was due to the fact that the American Medical Association was financially invested in uh, the tobacco industry. So I invite you to take a look at some of that history. Paradoxically, the American Medical Association's position against labeling of genetically modified foods and glyphosate contaminated foods actually contradicts medical ethics. One of the principal pillars of medical ethics is information and informed consent. Well, obviously, if the food isn't appropriately labeled, then people can't make appropriate decisions uh, because they're being kind of held in a state of ignorance. So we also see now that glyphosate is found in more than 75% of air and water in Mississippi, for example, which is a state in the United States. This was published in Environmental Toxicology and Chemistry 2014. Let's take a look at that data very quickly. Glyphosate and its degradation product, AMPA, were detected in more than 75% of air and rain samples in, again, the United States. Uh, and the total herbicide flux was dominated, as you can see here, underlined by glyphosate. So I invite you to take a look at that article if you'd like to actually see the source. The reason for the widespread contamination of the food supply and the environment, uh, including rainwater and air with glyphosate, is the fact that genetically modified foods have become so rapidly adopted. And a lot of these foods, uh, or so-called foods, are actually uh, corporate products. These genetically manipulated foods are sprayed with glyphosate. So when you see this chart, for example, from the US uh, Department of Agriculture, you see that genetically modified foods now dominate uh, the food market in the U.S. And because these foods are contaminated with glyphosate, when people consume these foods, they're actually consuming glyphosate along with the genetically modified foods. As you would expect, that's leading to the accumulation of glyphosate in animal tissues, that which we then later eat, like animals like uh, farm-raised fish and chicken and cows. And then, of course, not only do the animals accumulate glyphosate, but also the humans accumulate glyphosate as well. And you can see that uh, increasingly well documented. This rather interesting article published in Journal of Organic Systems 2014 connects glyphosate with the deterioration of health in the United States of America, connecting it with specific diseases, hypertension, stroke, diabetes, obesity, lipoprotein, metabolism disorders, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, autism, inflammatory bowel disease, intestinal infections, renal disease, acute kidney failure, cancers of thyroid, bladder, pancreas, kidney, and myeloid leukemia. Another very provocative article published here in 2014, Compositional Differences in Soybeans on the Market, Glyphosate Accumulates in Roundup Ready Genetically Modified Soybeans. 
So I invite you to take a look at that information. Uh, other concerns associated with glyphosate, of course, are damage to amphibian populations, killing of the bee populations, reproductive toxicity to many different species, uh, political misuse, uh, and brain diseases and behavioral problems, which have also been uh, cited in the literature. One of my concerns, uh, especially with what I've seen going on in Colombia, is how the war on drugs is being morphed into a free trade agreement, which is being ultimately morphed into the use of more glyphosate. So glyphosate actually gets incorporated into all of these agreements, whether it's the war on drugs or whether it's the free trade, so-called free trade agreements, uh, and that of course has an effect on livestock, uh, the ability of this agrarian culture to sustain itself. Each year, the results of the eradication operatives are presented to the U.S. government, who demands this in order to send hundreds of millions in aid money. In the United States, it was not to kill so much here in Colombia, arrancando de los campesinos, no, era de perseguir allá en los Estados Unidos, buscando la gente que la vende y que la consume. No siendo pues para castigarlos, sino dándole un ejemplo de vida. Esto es procesado con algo muy bravo. Mata a la gente deteriorantemente. Ellos mandan en su país, nosotros mandamos en nosotros. Si ellos quieren, entonces que comiencen por el país de ellos, dando el ejemplo, que no consuman tanto ni la compren tanto. The eradication process affects the farming communities even more when it's done through the aerial spraying of glyphosate, a highly toxic chemical pesticide. Estas obligaciones se ha hecho eh, vía aérea y eh, afectando no solamente a, a, a los cultivos ilícitos, sino también a los de pan coger. Y entonces eh, esto ha obligado que de una u otra forma las familias que, que no dependen de estos cultivos eh, sean afectados. Eh, varias veces han ocurrido varios desplazamientos por por causa de esta fumigación. Julián Cabrera es el coordinador for various farmers associations across Colombia. Se realizaron dos, dos movilizaciones donde se le exigió al, al gobierno que, que cesaran las fumigaciones, que eh, miraran la posibilidad de hacer la erradicación manual. Eh, se llegó a un acuerdo que se iba a hacer en algunas zonas y eh, en otras se iba a, por lo menos a procurar que no afectaran estos cultivos. Eh, desafortunadamente esos acuerdos se incumplieron. Julián is meeting the representatives of other farming communities who have suffered the consequences of the crop eradication process strongly promoted by the United States. Para fumigar los cultivos ilícitos, no solamente a los cultivos ilícitos, sino que el agua también queda envenenada y al tomarla a los animales y tomarla a las personas, pues causan muchas enfermedades. Nosotros nos dijeron que Plan Colombia comprendía dos fases, que es la fase de erradicación como tal y la fase de, 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 de pues, erradicación o de inversión social y ninguna, lo, la única que se ha efectuado es la, la parte de, de, de erradicación y de militarización de la zona, pero la parte de, de social no se ha visto por ningún lado. En esa zona el, la educación no existe, los niños allá tienen que, hay niños de 14 años que no, no han hecho un primero de, de, de primaria. Arnobis and many other farmers believe there is a more sinister motivation behind the eradication of crops. Pues nosotros como campesinos percibimos de que de que el gobierno nacional lo único que quiere es acabar la economía que, que está generando el campesino para para así pues meter sus proyectos con las multinacionales. Porque igual hay en otras partes donde donde han cultivado coca, donde hay coca y donde no tienen intereses particulares las multinacionales y allí no han llegado a erradicar. Solamente han llegado a erradicar a las zonas donde ellos tienen sus su intereses por el tema de las minerías con el tema de las hidroeléctricas. Arnobis theory could be a conspiracy or truth, but the fact is that Colombia is hugely rich in resources, many of which are not being exploited due to the 50-year-old conflict that could be finally coming to an end. Esa presencia de guerrilla afecta fuertemente la posibilidad de las grandes inversiones internacionales. Desde el tema de la madera, desde el tema de, de, de la Amazona, de todo lo que tiene que ver con oro, con esmeraldas, el tema hídrico y demás. O sea, eh, sí es un interés fuerte de que esto se pacifique para que sea un gran puntal del negocio, del negocio norteamericano.
Now, as you would expect, when glyphosate gets applied to the general population, uh, people tend to not like that and they tend to protest. Uh, but if they're suppressed by their own government, then of course that becomes a big problem. Uh, in this case, when the Campesino farmers were forced to use genetically modified foods and glyphosate, uh, they resisted that and they protested. Uh, this led to almost 700 arrests, uh, almost 500 people being wounded and 12 people being killed uh, due to the uh, farmers uh, desiring to not have to use genetically modified foods from the United States. Uh, for Colombian agriculture. I invite you to take a look at that video. It's very, very excellent. In Colombia, after 21 days of a nationwide strike by thousands of farmers who were supported by bus and truck drivers, miners, students, and others joining massive demonstrations in cities and towns all around the country, in places as far as Boyacá, Cundinamarca, Cauca, Huila, Putumayo, Caldas, Cundinamarca, and Nariño, and blocking more than 40 roads. In historic moment, protesting farmers forced the Colombian government to negotiate the rejection of a farm bill and the release of detained protesters. On Sunday, September the 8th, Vice President Angelino Garzón met with the Strike Negotiating Commission in Popayán and agreed to suspend Law 970, the one that gave control over seeds to the government. They also were promised the release of the 648 arrested during the strike and the creation of a new mining law. Under this first and provisional agreement, the government will compensate the farmers for their losses when competing with cheaper products imported under as much as 10 free market treaties with countries all around the world. In other cases, it will suspend the importation of such products. The strike was ended and negotiations started to discuss the pharmacist proposals. The process of negotiation as well as the final agreement and its implementation will be verified by the United Nations. In Putumayo, in the south of the country, Farmers' leaders and other actors of Colombian society met with President Santos and other authorities and officially started the negotiations after signing the initial document. The destruction of the farmers' rights stock seed, seeds they were keeping for the following year's planting time, occurred in Campo Alegre and other towns in 2012. For some, these images became the symbol of the farmers' strike, fighting for the right to keep their seeds. Seeds control was described by President Santos as having Colombia tuned up to international reality. Having the law 970 suspended is a partial yet symbolic victory for Colombia's social movement. Not only they got the seed control suspended, but most importantly, they got the government to recognize their leadership. The Mesa de Interlocución Agraria, Agricultural Dialogue Table which was elected by the coalition of Colombia's social and political movement to negotiate with the government when they were organizing the strike. The press reported a number of attempts by the government to negotiate and extract concessions with various farmers groups, but 13 other regions were still on strike and the government was forced to finally sit down on the farmers' table and negotiate. This is a profound contrast with Colombia's recent past Human rights groups, such as Amnesty International, have documented attacks on Colombian farmers and union leaders who had been kidnapped, tortured, and massacred by paramilitary forces, and sometimes even by the army, according to a number of reports published by Amnesty International. One of the towns that initiated the social strife was El Catatumbo in Tibú, north of Santander, in the northwest of Colombia where local farmers resisted 51 days in street battles, like this one on the video. <coughs> El Catatumbo's fight inspired thousands of other farmers who lost their fear, and about a month after that, they started a nationwide farmers' strike. A strike that 20 days after it began, managed to force the government to suspend Law 970, and at least study their other proposals. To push a resumption of negotiations, the strikers opened the roads they had blockaded. The negotiations are ongoing, and they have to decide over more structural issues. These are some of their petitions.
to set the prices for agricultural products independently of international market, and to set a fund to cover the difference so local farmers can get a fair price, and the government can guarantee their crops, a reduction in the price of gas and diesel, road tolls, and reduction on the price of fertilizer and other supplies, cancellation of the current agricultural policy, including the control of seeds, but also other policies not favorable to small and medium farms, to stop the importation of many products, but most importantly to suspend and review the free trade agreements with United States, European Union, China and other countries. Pardon for small and medium farmers' debts and the adoption of softer credit for farmers by a public banks to stop and reverse the sale of public lands to international owners and give them back to local farmers. The mining sector also pledged to the strike from the beginning and it incorporated its demands, some of which are the participation of traditional and small mining operators when setting policy that regulates the industry to stop and even revert some mining concessions and public contracts until it's determined if the local communities are affected, if the resources generated in the mines benefit them and if local small operations are allowed to work as well. Las consecuencias de mi pueblo minería así lo abierto es que van a acabar con una tradición y una cultura que tenemos más de 500 años. Es una tristeza que tenemos nosotros en el corazón porque venimos luchando. Nuestros antepasados han luchado por el territorio, una, una minería tradicional, una minería trae, una minería artesanal. For the population in general, they demand investment on rural populations and cities to get access to education, healthcare, public service, and affordable housing. Many of these demands go against the core of the neoliberal policies adopted by previous Colombian administrations. The strike represented a broader segment of population than first thought. What started as a farmers and miners strike very soon turned into a general strike with bus drivers, truckers, students, and even general population in the streets claiming for their own demands. Street battles of all kinds took place, like this one in Bosa, La Libertad, a neighbor outside Bogota, where many protesters attempt to take a police station by storm. The strike organization reported 660 human rights violations that were documented. The police brutality and the negative by the president to recognize the farmers' leadership as well as the dire economic situation Colombians live every day with a minimum salary of $291 and a gas price of $4.6 a gallon. All of this created a sort of perfect storm that exploited in August. Police reported 648 arrested. The farmers' organization claimed 262 of them were illegally detained. There was 485 wounded and 12 dead on a week marked by protest and while Santos put up a political fight, at the end of the day, after his popularity went down to an all-time record low of 21%, his government was forced to admit that it needed to recognize and negotiate with the national strikes leaders. We are yet to see if the Santos administration will concede any more of the farmers' demands, especially the more structural ones. Reporting for The Real News, this is Oscar Leon. So for all of those reasons and others, I really believe that glyphosate deserves to be titled the toxic chemical of the year. Again, no chemical does more on a widespread basis to promote unrest and disease via inhibition of cytochrome P450, genotoxic DNA damaging effects, the ability to induce mitochondrial dysfunction, its excellent tissue penetration, the fact that it's carcinogenic and estrogenic, synergistic with GMO promoted inflammation, unsurpassed political protection and political infiltration via the war on drugs or the so-called free trade agreements, also widespread exposure via air and water, and unsurpassed overall, unsurpassed distribution to the population via air, water, and food.